Tonight, we're going to spend the next hour paying tribute to a special man who served here in this Congress since 1997, our dear friend, Congressman John Shimkus. John came to Congress back at a time when you saw a lot more collegiality. And in fact, Madam Speaker, tonight we have Republicans and Democrats on this floor who are going to be talking about John Chimkus, the man, John Chimkus, our friend, John Chimkus, the legislator, somebody who, when he retires, will have a proud record of achievement, showing how he made his mark on this great nation. We're joined in this House chamber tonight by John's lovely wife, Karen, who's here tonight. His son, Josh, is not far from the chamber. Uh, we have many friends, and I know we have a limited amount of time. Uh, first, Madam Speaker, I would like to yield to the Dean of the House, the gentleman from Alaska, Mr. Don Young. I thank you for yielding, leader. And John Shimkus has been my friend. He's done well for this House. He and I played paddle ball together. We never lost. We'll be challenged on that, but that's true. And I have a saying that many people may not recognize. Why do the good people leave this Congress and the SOB stay behind? And I've been here 48 years, so I got to reconsider that. But John, we'll miss you. You're a great Congressman. You're a great ally. You're a great American. And I know you've served your district very well. And God bless you in the future for things you may do. Yield back. Thank you, uh, Dean Young. And uh, yeah, we, we're going to check that record, and I know I'm, I'm glad I never went up against you, although you, you've, you've taken, a, taken a few of us to the woodshed. Uh, keeping with the bipartisan tradition, uh, our friend on the Energy and Commerce Committee we served together, uh, the gentleman from California, if you are ready to go, Mr. McNerney. Well, I thank the whip uh, for the opportunity to say some words here. I'll button up a little bit. I want to look good for John. <clears throat> uh, you know, my first impression of John was pretty scary. It was my first day on the Energy and Commerce Committee, and John was in the top dais, and I was down in the front, little freshman. And John looked down at us and said, "You know, your policies are going to cost your policies, the Democratic Party, are going to cost you your seat." And I looked back, "Oh, geez, hope he's not looking at me." He was, <laughs> but we got over it. Um, it's funny, when, when, when climate change issue came up, uh, John had a standard practice. He would bring out this big picture of his, of his uh, coal mine workers and say, you know, you guys, climate policy is going to cost these people their jobs. And so that's a, that's a hard argument to fight against. That's a hard argument because you know he's fighting for his people. And I know uh, there's other people here that are shaking their heads in that one. So, but I respected that. He was fighting for the people he cared about and the people he, he uh, represented. And, but there were um, some things John and I had in common. We both played paddle ball. And, you know, we were pretty evenly matched, so we got some good games. And the, the great thing about that is that you get to know people that you wouldn't otherwise get to know. And that was important. And I think that's a tradition that we need to carry on. Uh, we also both went to West Point, so we had that little bit in common, and that was fun to talk about that. So eventually we started talking about policy. Oh, and I asked, one day I asked Henry Baxter, what about John Chemkus? And, John, and Henry said, you know, he's a nice guy, Jerry, but, and then he frowned and he said, but he sure is conservative. And that's coming from Henry Waxman, so I don't know if that means anything or not. But um, John and I started talking about nuclear waste, about policy. And so he took me to Yucca Mountain, you know, it's pretty impressive, but it's totally shut down. You know, sorry to tell you, John, ain't going to happen as much as we would like it to. I even talked to Dean Heller about it, and Dean Heller said, oh, John Shimkus, people in Nevada think of him as Darth Vader. <laughs> <clears throat> so later it was suggested that the Democrats and the Republicans sit together during State of the Union, and that's cool. John and I sat together, uh, and I can tell you it's weird when the president is in the other party and you're sitting with that party, and everyone stands up and cheers, and you're sitting there, your hands, <laughs> sitting on your hands. So uh, we got through that. But um, we still play paddle ball occasionally. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, I think <clears throat> as time goes on, uh, we got to be friends and uh, we talked a lot. And I can tell you, uh, John's had an impression on me and he stands up for what he believes in. Uh, we need more people like that that have strong beliefs but that are willing to fight uh, for what they believe in but are also willing to compromise and work with the other side to make progress happen. And that's, that's what we need in this institution. I respect John for that. Uh, and uh, we'll miss having him here, but we'll find somebody else. <laughs> I yield back. With, with that warm tribute, uh, Madam Speaker, we uh, uh, clearly, we, we work well together. We have comedy with each other. You've got to keep your sanity around here by keeping things lighthearted in the middle of a lot of, uh, a lot of heated battles sometimes. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, when you think about the friendships, uh, I know, and, and I'll share my story with John shortly, but there's a townhouse that John Shimkus owns here in Washington, D.C., and it's a four-bedroom townhouse. There are four members of Congress that live in that townhouse. We each have our own bedrooms and bathrooms, uh, but we come together, and it, it's been a special, I think, a special part of all of our times up here in Congress to get to know each other so well, but the, uh, the member of Congress who has lived in the townhouse with John the longest, probably going back to when he purchased it, is our dear friend and colleague and roommate, uh, the gentleman from Texas, Kevin Brady, and I yield. Thank you, Whip, for organizing this special order. Remind me, never have Congressman McInerney do my eulogy. Um, <laughs> the crowd would never believe. We are here to honor a remarkable man, a classmate, and a friend of mine for 24 years. And we all know in Washington and across the country his leadership in energy for the Energy and Commerce Committee, his leadership of the Environment and Climate Change Subcommittee, but you may not know uh, his achievements in the heart. He's committed to the Baltic states in developing and enhancing that relationship with the U.S. His many years of service on the NATO Parliamentary Assembly, traveling uh, back and forth to Europe to lay out and preserve that important relationship. His role serving on the Smithsonian uh, Institution Board of Regents and his service on the West Point Board of Governors. He has uh, an amazing legacy uh, for our country. Uh, and he's worked with, with colleagues on both sides of the aisle to achieve things that matter to real people. You know, his 1998 law signed into law allowing for biofuel use, federal, state, and private fleets, has made biodiesel more readily available fuel pumps across the country. He's always focused on making sure 9-11 or 9-1-1 work for the American people. And in 1999, he designated 9-1-1 as a universal emergency number in the U.S. for mobile as well as landline telephones. Continue to prove on that for our safety and security. He led the bill to require federal testing of children's booster seats, something every parent can take to heart. Following that, he created a new Internet domain a place where children could go that was safe and secure from predators. It was game changing. His 2003 law created a placement for heart defibrillators in the schools. You can see a theme here, helping real people, helping children, helping families. And he continued that work throughout uh, his years on energy uh, and commerce. I could go on and on, but he took on tough issues as well, ones that people never thought could solve, like the Toxic Substance Control Act, something he worked years for to build bipartisan uh, support, something that makes our nation more secure environmentally as well. And we all know, since we've nicknamed him uh, Yucca Shimkus for many years, uh, his devotion to try to find a safe, secure nuclear energy future for America. He didn't do this by himself. He has an amazing family. His, his wife, Karen, is, as Steve said, is here today. His three sons, David, Josh, and Daniel, who we watched growing up reading uh, in the townhouse backing uh, their dad. He is, his heart is never far away from his hometown, hometown of Collinsville, Illinois. He is, as you know, a proud uh, graduate of the United States Military Academy. He served over five years active duty in the Army, then entered the Army Reserves. 
You know, he retired with the rank of lieutenant colonel. After 28 years of military service, I can tell you as his roommates, when we finished long days at the Capitol and trying to figure out how we get ready for the next day, John was leaving to go to a reserve training, continuing education class, or the weekends on his training as well. He, he has a devotion to this country that is un, unbelievable. His service has not just been to his country, but to his community. He ran and won his first election for the school township trustees because he wanted to help children in his community. He was elected to Madison County Treasurer so he could serve a broader group of constituents. In 1996, he won his first term uh, in the United States House from Illinois' 20th District. Today, he represents the 33 counties of the 15th District, and I can tell you it is, must be an amazing district because we all know where the largest ketchup bottle in America is located, <laughs> Collinsville, Illinois. We know his district is the horseradish capital of the world with the horseradish festival, horseradish food, horseradish fun. And um, I will tell you, uh, he loves his, his Lord. He loves his family. And he has always fretted about how, more, how much more can I do to help our church, the Holy Cross Lutheran Church, in which he has worshipped his entire life. Two th points as we finish from me. Uh, you'd love being his roommate. Uh, he, is, um, he is a man of integrity, of character. Um, he is every morning, the first one up in the morning, sitting at the kitchen table, uh, reading the Bible, uh, sending out uh, those Bible phrases for his friends and colleagues in preparing for uh, his day. Uh, he is an amazing teammate, along with classmate and roommate. He and I have played in the congressional baseball game now for 23 straight years. Uh, he, he is a baseball player. He's won MVP four or five times. We've all lost count. He is the last a uh, member of Congress to hit a home run out of the field, out of the park, on his first debate in his first year in Congress. He's never hit the ball anywhere that close ever since. <laughs> he was a catcher and a pitcher and the captain uh, of our team, which doesn't surprise you. He's been the captain of everything he's been involved with his entire life. And, and with this, I'll tell you one how remarkable, what a, how gutsy this guy is. So in 2004 or so, he had open heart surgery in the spring, uh, which of course would mean he would miss his favorite baseball game. So we had the congressional baseball game. The doctor told him, you can begin to start exercising thir three months after this surgery. Well, the baseball game happened to be exactly three months after the surgery. Another pitcher started the game, was called back to Congress for votes in the Senate, and out of the bullpen came John Shimkus three months after heart surgery, not orthoscopic surgery, the kind that cracks you open. There he was, three up, three down, helping save the game for the Republicans. That's the kind of lawmaker, that's the kind of friend, that's the kind of competitor he is, never letting you down, has always upheld the highest standards for our country, for Congress, and I will tell you at a time where each day you're told what's wrong with America, John Shimkus is what's right with America, and we are so proud of our friend's service, and he will be missed like nobody else. God bless you, John. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, as you can see, Madam Speaker, it is, uh, these are tough jobs. These are tough times. Uh, but when you come up to Congress, you don't just come up here to fight for the things you believe in. That's clearly why you run. We all have a deep love for this country. We all have a deep set of beliefs that we come to try to advocate for. But we all know in a job like this, you can't do it alone. You need to work with other people. You need to find allies, people who want to help join you in that cause to advance the things you believe in. And along that way, Madam Speaker, you, you truly do make deep friendships. I remember I was a new member in a special election. I came in towards the tail end of a Congress in 2008 with only six months left in the term. Didn't really know anybody here, trying to find my way, in fact, trying to find a place to live. 
I was living with one of my college roommates who works up here in DC and they had a baby on the way and I was staying in the baby's room. So I knew I had a few weeks left before I had to find another place to live. And so I asked my colleague right over there, I asked Jim McCreary, Congressman from Louisiana. I said, Jim, looking for a place. What do you do to, to you know, find a place around here? And he said, well, you know, John Shimkus has an opening at his townhouse. I said, who's John Shimkus? <laughs> and uh, didn't know John. And he literally pointed and John was right there in the well of the house during a vote series. So all the members of Congress are joined together. He points John out. So I walked down and I introduced myself to John, said, heard you have an opening at your townhouse. I just came here and I'm looking for a place to stay. And he said, why don't you come by later tonight? And uh, that, Madam Speaker, started an incredible friendship. Uh, that next day, I called Jennifer that night, my wife, and I said, I think I found a place to live. And that next day, I moved in. Didn't really know Kevin Brady. And uh, next thing you know, I'm, I'm rooming with these gentlemen and getting to know people who became dear friends. And, and again, in a job like this, you work really hard advocating for the things that you ran on back home. You're fighting for the people in your district. I'm honored to represent Southeast Louisiana. But you're also working with some incredible people and you get to meet incredible people along the way. And John Shimkus is truly, as Kevin said, one of, those, one of those true, genuine people. Somebody that you can entrust uh, the things that you want to share with only a few people, uh, close friendships that do form up here. You don't hear about that a lot, uh, but yet we were able to form such a deep friendship. Somebody who you can trust, uh, as Kevin said, John went to West Point. He's an army guy, so he was the drill sergeant in the townhouse, and when John says something, you back your brother's play. In fact, the second day I was in the townhouse, John said, Steve, tomorrow you gotta get up at six in the morning and we're going out to play baseball. I didn't know about the tradition between the Republicans and Democrats. I guess I have John to blame. But John said, you've gotta come out for the baseball team. I hadn't played baseball in over 25 years. Didn't even have a glove. <laughs> And yet, next thing you know, the next morning I'm up playing baseball. And boy, what a start of, again, ability to generate even more friendships, uh, to, to forge friendships with people on both sides of the aisle, some that you work with on a regular basis, some that you're not always working with, but people who you get to form a deep friendship with. And that's really what makes Congress work. It's not the things that you see on the nightly news, the big fights that are go on between the parties and sometimes within the parties. But it's the day-to-day -day grind where people do come together and find common ground to advance the things that they believe in to make this a greater nation. And John Shimkus has done that on so many fronts. I've got to see it. Yes, he is the first one up. He's reading his Bible. He's writing down verses. But when it's time to leave, he starts to whistle. And you know, you don't need an alarm clock. When John starts to whistle, that means it's time to go to work. And, uh, and again, just a person who wakes up and goes to work for the people of Southern Illinois and the United States of America, just like he served our country in the military. Uh, for 24 years, he served this great nation. We're a better nation because John Shimkus has been a member of this wonderful body, the People's House. This is really where people come together. I started this morning in Philadelphia, I had some meetings there, and I actually, on my way out, passed by Independence Hall. You never can see that enough. Got to see the Liberty Bell this morning. Got to go see the chamber where George Washington sat as they signed the Declaration of Independence, where they wrote the Constitution of the United States. Right next door, the chamber where Congress met for 10 years when they were building this beautiful building, where they actually passed the Bill of Rights. We are all honored to be a part of this special place where people of all walks of life come together and you meet people of different backgrounds, you work with people of different backgrounds and you work to make this a better country. And you just hope, you just pray as you're praying to God for strength, for wisdom, for guidance, as we all do, that whenever you leave, we all leave this job, hopefully you leave on your own terms. If you look back and you can say that you left your mark, you made this a better country. John Shimkus, you left your mark. You get to leave on your own terms. You get to go home with Karen and 
enjoy your life in Southern Illinois and you've earned this opportunity to have a new chapter in your life because you can look back and say for 24 years, you served here in this great body and made this a better institution and made this a better country because of your service. Thank you, John, for this opportunity to get to know you so well. And with that, I yield to my friend, someone who actually worked with John Shimkus. John, uh, we're gonna have Rodney Davis take over for a minute, but for now, I will yield my time back to the speaker. Back. So I just say the same thing. Under the Speaker's announced policy of January 3rd, 2019, the gentleman from Illinois, Mr. Davis, is recognized for the remainder of the 60 minutes as the designee of the minority leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. At, at this point, I'd like to uh, go over to the other side of the aisle uh, to recognize my friend, Mr. Tonko from New York to offer his comments. Thank you, and I thank the um gentlemen for yielding. And um, John, it's an honor and pleasure to be here with our colleagues to salute you and thank you for the uh, tremendous service that you have provided not only the people of your congressional district, but the people of this nation. And it is very obvious that you are much loved and appreciated and respected by your colleagues in this house. It um, is also humbling to know that um, you have brought a good name to politics, and you have reminded us by your very actions and your deeply rooted beliefs uh, in the various issues that you tackle that um, it is not only okay, but it's essential to have differences in this house. And it's to share those differences in a respectable way, which you have always done, so as to build the best product. And so I think this evening, we salute your integrity and your humility, which oftentimes is, uh, is what I think drives your, your personality to be able to achieve and to be drive, have this driving force to accomplish on behalf of the people. Um, so I appreciate the opportunity to participate this evening. And I'll try not to undermine John Shimkus' sterling conservative credentials uh, by joining in this discussion this evening. But for six years, I've served as the ranking member to um, Mr. Shimkus's subcommittee chair. In the past two years, we have switched roles. But during all of that time, we have disagreed on many occasions. In fact, we're disagreeing right now. Um, but that doesn't stop me from coming here this evening to just share my respect with others for you and the um, the tremendous performance you have put forth uh, on behalf of the Republic. Um, but I've, I, as I have found, you have been tremendously accessible, very open-minded and fair, always looking for a way to us, for us to achieve and to build that compromise. It's been a great partnership, and even if we didn't see eye to eye on everything, and I will always appreciate that we would work together to try to find common ground on issues where we thought we could agree. I'm really proud of our, of our bipartisan work on Brownfields, where we reauthorized and improved that program. Um, certainly on the drinking water infrastructure efforts that we made, and essential for our communities. We made some great improvements to both of those programs, and it would not have been possible without your leadership, John. And while we have had some different perspectives on Tosca, I believe it's fair to say that Representative Shimkus has done some undeniably monumental work on chemical safety for this country. His district and this chamber are losing a great representative, and Yucca Mountain is losing a frequent visitor. 
John, I want to congratulate you on your retirement. I wish you and Karen the very best as you go forward. You have displayed to me tremendous qualities of character. When you speak of your family, the love you have for them is just apparent in your face when you talk about them. You're so proud of that partnership you have with Karen and of the children, the offspring that you have created. It's also very evident that you um, have enjoyed service to this country, not only in this House, but as a member of the New York delegation, I'm proud to say that we adopt you as a West Point cadet and that you have shown your strength and your valor and your courage to be a strong element that you have contributed to this country. And so I thank you for your integrity. I thank you for your deeply rooted faith that has made a lot of our partnership work. You're guided with that humble spirit to um, serve your creator through the gifts you've been endowed. So thank you. Thank you for being such a great friend. Thank you for being such a great work partner. And thank you for the success that we have achieved together. Um, and I hope there's more to come in the ensuing days and weeks that you'll be here. So uh, congratulations, my friend. Know that you made your mark and that you've uh, earned many, many, many stars after your name. God bless. Thank you, Mr. Tonko. I, I felt a little John Shimkasy here. I was getting a little impatient. I thought we were running out of time. So I'm going to ask my colleagues, please try to limit your comments to a minimum, maximum of two minutes. Uh, I want to recognize my good friend and fellow Illinoisan, Darren LaHood. Well, thank you, Congressman Davis and Madam Speaker. Um, it's a pleasure to be here tonight with my colleagues to honor John Shimkus. And I want to uh, uh, obviously um, echo the remarks of everyone that spoke before me. And um, we've heard about John's service, um, obviously his service at West Point and his service to the Army, 28 years uh, serving uh, us in the military, retiring as a lieutenant colonel. But as a the newest member of the Republican delegation coming in five years ago, I just want to comment on what John Shimkus has meant to me as a uh, new member. Coming in on a special election in September of 2015, uh, John, as the head of our delegation, was there for me as he's been for so many of us uh, here in the Congress. And uh, John's friendship, his mentorship, his example that he has set for us has been invaluable. And um, uh, he really has set the gold standard for being a legislator, and my colleagues have talked about that. He showed the importance of good constituent service, being a cheerleader for your district, and making the federal government work for the people that you represent. And uh, John has been in Congress for all the right reasons, and uh, as has been articulated by my colleagues, how much he cares for his family, his faith, and the constituents he represents in Southern Illinois. And John, you're going to leave an indelible mark here in the Congress on the work you did on the House Energy and Commerce Committee and on the People's House here. And Illinois and this country owe you a sincere thanks for your selfless service, not only to Congress, but to the Army. And uh, we will miss you in the Illinois delegation, but we know that Karen and your three sons will be happy to have you home. And I also want to mention, um, putting Congressman Davis aside, John has hired very good staff in his time in Congress. Uh, and, and I mean that. If you look at the people that have worked for John Shimkus, that have come through his organization, people that have gone on to do great things back in Illinois, here in Washington, D.C., and that's, uh, a, that's a, uh, another testament to John Shipkiss and his team. And I have to give a shout out to Craig Roberts, his longtime staffer. Him and John have done a remarkable job leading this delegation and doing so much for their district and the people of Illinois. So, John, I want to congratulate you on a well-earned retirement. And thank you for everything you've done for me and our country. And Congress is a better place because of your service. Thank you. And I yield back. Thank you, Congressman LaHood. I uh, now would like to recognize my colleague who's known John Shimkus before he was even elected, uh, Mr. Mike Bost from Southern Illinois. Thank you, Mr. Davis, and thank you, Madam Chair. You know, that's true. I, I have known John Shimkus since he was actually a tre treasurer uh, in Madison County where he for the was the one that held the spot for 
it's been 10 years since a Republican had held the spot, and he took that, and, and, and I was a state legislator, and, and I kept hearing about this guy, John Shimkus, from Madison County, and, and, and I, I actually became to, came to know him and as I ran for state representative, and then all of a sudden they said he's going to run for Congress, and I thought, what a wonderful thing. And you know, each one of us in our districts, when we see that, and as we're local elected officials, we think, oh, that, that, that's going to be good. But we didn't realize how great it would be. At this time, when we'd like to joke with John because we love him, the reality is he served his district well. He hasn't just served his district well. He served the state well. He served the nation well. And he's made differences in the world. I'd like to harass him about the fact that he's an Army guy as a Marine. But the reality is, is that he served well in the Army as well. He's a man of integrity. He's a man of faith. He loves his family. And really, that's what our nation is about. He's going to be missed terribly in this body. We want to joke about the fact that he's quitting. But you know what? He didn't quit. He stood up. He stood up in tough times. He stood up in good times. But the people of this nation are better because this man has served in Congress. He's a close friend. You can hear that with the people that are talking here. He's a father who loves his children. He's a husband that loves his wife. And he's a man that loves his God. Who could ask for anything more? John, thank you. And I yield back. I'd like to take this up. You know, I'm going to start actually asking for time. So I'd like to recognize my colleague from Illinois for a minute and a half, Mr. Krishnamurthy. Thank you, Congressman Davis. Uh, Madam Speaker, I rise today to thank John Shimkus and wish him the very best in his retirement. Now, John, you may not remember this, but four years ago when I joined this Congress, I said I'd like to come and meet you. So you invited me to your office. You could not pronounce my name. Few people can. I said, just call me Raja. My last name allows me to get on a first name basis with everybody in this place. And from that point forward, we developed a relationship, a friendship, to the point where very recently I came to you and asked you to co-sponsor a piece of legislation, and you just said, put me on it, without even asking me what I was asking you to co-sponsor. And um, it, was, uh, it was moving to me because you trusted me, and it was based on a friendship rooted on shared values, even though we may not be in the same party, we are all Americans. And that's something that I deeply cherish about our relationship. Now, as a wise man once said, we can find common ground only by moving to a higher ground. Only by moving to a higher ground. And working with John proved to me that we can ascend to higher heights, but only if we try. And John Shimkus represents the epitome of a legislator who tries to ascend to higher grounds every day. So I thank John and his excellent staff, including his longtime chief, Craig Roberts, for their incredible, devoted service to their family, to their community, and to their country. Thank you so much, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Krishnamurthy. Raja. I'd like to now recognize uh, the uh, good friend of Congressman Shimkus and all of us, Mr. Greg Walden. Well, thank you, uh, Congressman Davis, and to Karen Shimkus and the family, thanks for sharing John with all of us for so many years. Thanks for your warmth and friendship as well. Um, I'm told that, that John is a big fan of the movie Tombstone, and uh, 
as the former chairman of the committee, ranking member of the committee, there are a couple of great quotes out of Tombstone that I think sum up for many of us who've had the ple pleasure to serve with him and see his passion for his district, see his passion for his community, see his passion for good policy. And one of them would be when Kurt Russell said, tell him the law's coming. You tell him I'm coming and hell's coming with me. And when you want somebody at your side fighting for a cause, that sums up John Shimkus. Russell also said, you called down thunder, well now you got it. And as we've tackled these issues, and we've watched John stand up for the people that sent him here, we know that he is by their side, and he not only brings the passion, but he brings the intellect, and he brings deep principle to every fight. So John, we wish you and Karen and the family well, and Godspeed in your next endeavor my friend, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Walden. Uh, sticking with the Energy and Commerce Committee that Mr. Shimkus has served on since he got to Congress in 1996, I'd like to recognize Mr. McKinley for a minute or so. Uh, thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, look, I, I rise tonight to honor my friend, uh, John Shimkus. 10 years ago, John uh, took me under his wing it was, it was my mentor uh, to get started in this. And, and I, I can't tell you how much I've learned from being around John. Now in Scotland, McKinley means stubborn in Gaelic. I've wondered, what does Shimkus mean in Lithuania? Now, I gotta say, the only thing I can think of in trying to check this out is it must be persistence. Because I can't, I've never met a person as persistent is John Shimkus. He personifies the trait. Think about what he's done in his 24 years here in Congress. That just, just most recently, where he's been his relentless focus in leading legislation on brownfield legislation, or, or, or the fly ash legislation, or his love of Tosca. So John, you've made a difference. You've impacted many of us in our careers. You'll never know how many lives you touched and the thousands, hundreds of thousands of jobs that through your legislation that you've helped create in America. I think we all owe you a debt of gratitude for that. So thank you for being a friend. Thank you for being a great American. And thank you, Karen, for sharing him with us. So it's been an honor to work with you, and I wish you the best in the years to come. God bless you. Now you back. Thank you, Mr. McKinley. I'd like to now recognize another leader on the Energy and Commerce Committee, Mr. Burgess from Texas. I thank the gentleman for yielding. I want to thank John for his service to the Congress, to his service to the country, and John's life has been all about service, from West Point to the U.S. Army, the U.S. Army Reserves. For 15 years, it's been my high privilege to serve with John on the Energy and Commerce Committee. And you can tell by the number of members of the Energy and Commerce Committee who are here tonight just what an impact he has had on that committee. I, I'll tell you, John, my, my, some of my fondest memories of March of 2011, after Harry Reid had shut down the project that was to be long-term nuclear storage out in Yucca Mountain, Nevada, I still have a piece of the rock that the yucca mucker kicked up and uh, the tailings when we walked into that uh, enormous cavern, man-made cavern out there. Uh, but your passion for that, uh, for that issue has not dimmed over the years and uh, I'll just promise you that uh, we'll take up and, and carry on uh, in the Congresses to come. So I thank you very much for the privilege of having known you and I'll yield back. Thank you, Mr. Burgess. I'd now like to recognize another Energy and Commerce member from the great state of Indiana, Ms. Brooks. Madam Speaker, thank you for yielding. I rise today to honor my good friend and a fellow Midwesterner, our colleague, Congressman John Shimkus. I had the absolute honor of serving with him also on Energy and Commerce Committee. His 24 years of serving this body has had a tremendous impact on our country, as we've heard. But personally, his role on the steering committee had a critical impact on my own career from which I'm retiring from Congress this year as well, and I thank him for fighting for me. Because the first time ever, two Hoosiers made it to energy and commerce, which was unprecedented, myself and Dr. Bouchon. 
So the reputation of ENC, we work, he has led the way in working both sides of the aisle as we've seen to create bipartisan legislation that, craft, that he crafted to help all Americans. Instrumental in designated 911 as a universal emergency number. Former teacher, and I'm the mom of a teacher, he ensured that schools have the appropriate life-saving equipment to keep students safe. As a proud Lithuanian descendant, and I might say he's a rock star in Lithuania, and I was there once with he and Karen in Lithuania, his support for our staunch ally has been critical to our two countries' really important relationship. There are just so many things to mention. This body is going to miss him and his patriotic passion dearly, but I wish John and Karen really an incredible retirement of love and a lot of music. And I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Brooks. I'd like now recognize the gentleman from Ohio, another ENC member, Mr. Latta. Well, thanks very much. I appreciate my friend for yielding, and uh, John, we're going to miss you. And uh, you probably don't remember this because you talked to a lot of folks, but uh, when I, uh, even before I got here, one of the first persons I talked with was you in your office. I can still remember. And uh, one of the things I was talking to you about was how do I get on ENC? I hadn't even gotten elected yet. But uh, you uh, were very gracious to uh, talk with me that afternoon, and I'll never forget it. But one of the things I know about you is this. You've got your priorities right in life, and it's the way you build things. It's your God, your family, and your country. And you always, always showed that to the rest of us. It was something that you believed in, and uh, again, we all have such great respect for you. And, I, and also, serving on committee with you and uh, when you were chairing uh, the Environment Subcommittee and one of the things that you're passionate about, I, you know, about making sure things got done, and uh, Tosca. When we were talking about getting things done, you know, people, nobody thought it was going to get done. He got it done. And the other thing that you were working on that we still got to get done is when we were talking about Yucca Mountain. And I'll never forget when we all, we, you took a group of us out there to Yucca, and, uh, you know, again, uh, it's something that you believed in, but it's something that we have to do. And so, uh, you know, that's your legacy. And for all your years of service, not only here in the House, but also to your country in the Army, but I think it really uh, comes back to something my dad taught me. Dad was in public service for 36 years. He said, always remember, there are two types of people that get into this. He said, those that want to be a politician and those that want to be a public servant. And this is how he defined it. A public servant sees how much they can take from the people they represent for their own benefit, while a public servant sees how much they can give back to the people they represent. And so all I can say is we're going to miss you, and uh, you've been a great leader on committee, you've been a great leader in this house. I wish you all the best, you and your family, and because I know we've, we've talked about through the years about how families are doing, but I can't thank you enough for your service to this country and to this house. So thank you very much, and I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Latta. Mr. Guthrie, another ENC member from the great state of Kentucky. Thank you very much. I'm here tonight to honor Mr. Shimkus. I call him Mr. Shimkus because that's how a junior West Point cadet refers to a senior West Point cadet. And one of the most insulting things I get here in, in Washington, people ask me often, were you at West Point with John Shimkus? And I always say, do I look like I could have been at West Point when John Chimkus was there? We're not that far apart, class of 80 to class of 87, but he's passionate about his country. I serve on a NATO committee with him. I want to tell one quick story. It's really more passionate about his family. One year we were visiting our allies. We were visiting on, in Holland, and John went on, went on a mission to find some kind of horn. I forget the name of the horn, but it's a Dutch horn. He went to a village. He went to somebody's home. This thing wasn't easy to find, but he said, i got to find it because my wife wants it. My wife always wants a unique musical instrument from some country that I visit. And it wasn't like, I got to get this from my wife. He was passionate about getting this thing was as big as half of this table, and he had to carry it back. And when he started telling people while he was doing it, you could just see the passion in his face. He goes, my wife, who's here with us tonight, my wife, she teaches music. And when she teaches this kind of music, this history, she gets these instruments out that I collect. And she goes through them, and he teaches the history of the country where this music is from. So it combined, you can see John's passion for history, his wife's passion for music, and his passion for his family. And then finally, I, he may not remember this, but I was standing with him the opening night of uh, one of the pre-opening night of the Bible Museum. And I remember being with him when he saw Martin Luther's Bible that's there. And it just looked at it, I could just see him just, just speechless because the great Lutheran that he is, is love of the Word of God and the love of 
the love of his, of his God. And so it shows what the common theme tonight, John is passionate about his country, through West Point and his service to the Army and the NATO Committee, passionate about his family, is just unmistakable. It's just, it's just there. It's in his face. You, he can't, his face shows everything he's thinking. And when he talks about his wife, you can certainly see it. And when I was standing there with him, he's passionate about his God. Duty, honor, country is learned at West Point, but country, family, and God. That is so important. And thank you, John, for your service. We're going to miss you. Thank you. And I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Guthrie. Uh, Mr. Griffith, another ENC member from the great state of Virginia. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And uh, we've heard a lot of great comments about John. And we've heard, I, I was not officially a mentee, but when I first got to the Energy and Commerce Committee, he immediately started giving me pointers and guidance. And we talk about issues and we talk about how you do things and how sometimes it's frustrating around here, as, as we all know. And I appreciate very much all the help that you gave me and the guidance that you gave me uh, through the years. I am going to miss you uh, deeply on the committee. Uh, I appreciate all of your service. I could talk about all the things that all the other people have, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to point something out that I realized as I was sitting here. Every member of Congress, by nature, is a political junkie. And unfortunately, the time to celebrate your service overlaps with a presidential uh, uh, debate. <laughs> so it'll get higher ratings in the reruns than it'll get in the primetime first, first edition. But when you stop to think about it, think about all the members of Congress who stayed here, who wanted to say something positive about you, about your service, your commitment to your family, to your God, and to your country. And we're all here missing that big event because we love John Shimkus. So God bless you. Godspeed on, on the work that you have to do further. And I yield back. Thank you, uh, Mr. Griffith. And now I'd like to recognize another good friend from the great state of Texas, Mr. Arrington, for brief remarks. Thank you, uh, Representative Davis. I rise uh, to honor my colleague, my friend, and fellow pitcher on the congressional baseball team. In fact, in 2018, uh, after watching uh, my colleague John Shimkus pitch for an inning, I, I followed him on to the mound. And after watching him for an entire inning, I still, Madam Speaker, cannot throw the ball straight. And, uh, but in all seriousness, uh, it's a privilege to serve with a man with such great character and commitment to service. In fact, John, you're the epitome of a servant leader. Uh, I imagine this is how you were when you were a soldier, when you were a teacher, a local leader. That's certainly um, who you are in this chamber, and it's made all the difference. Um, I'm reminded of the, the scripture in Philippians uh, that says, do, not, do nothing rather out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, rather in humility value others above yourself. That's who you are, John, and uh, that's that's the value and the trait that has made this country what it is today. And I pray that we'll have more leaders follow you in your ilk. And it's an honor to be your friend. I'm grateful for your friendship. And I wish you blessings and Godspeed in all your future endeavors. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Arrington. And I can attest, sometimes you cannot throw the pitch straight. My shin feels that. Uh, but you know what? Thank you for your kind words. I'd now like to recognize uh, the newest member of the uh, Shimkus slumlord era at his townhouse, the newest member, Mr. Stauber from Minnesota. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker. Correction, Madam Speaker. I rise today to thank my good friend and roommate, colleague, Congressman John Shimkus for his 24 years of dedicated service in the United States House of Representatives. John began his life of commitment to our country when he enrolled at the prestigious West Point Academy. Following graduation from West Point, John served five years in the Army, then entered the Army Reserves. Much like his time in the military, John's service in Congress has been de defined by his steadfast approach to leadership and integrity. When I was elected to Congress almost two years ago, I was grateful to have John not only as my guide, but also as a roommate and friend. 
It has been a great privilege to live in the legendary Shimkiss townhouse where there were only two requirements that I had to pay the rent on time and I had to make sure the freezer was stocked with Dairy Queen Dilly Bars. And I will always be thankful for the many late night conversations after a hard day's work where he and I had the chance to discuss not only policy and legislation, but also about our lives and families. Serving in Congress often means spending a lot of time away from family and loved ones. So I want to thank John's wife, Karen, and his three sons, David, Joshua, and Daniel, for allowing their father, John, to serve for 24 long years. I know they will be happy to have him closer to home, and our loss is their gain. Madam Speaker, this entire body will miss John, and I am sure his constituency is thankful for, here, for his years of service. I know I am. That's the conclusion of my official remarks. But I want to talk off the cuff for a couple of minutes. Mr. We talked about will the, the gentleman yield. The gentleman will yield. We had some more speakers arrive, so can you let let us let us know those off the cuff remarks you, quickly? I just uh, want to thank you for your your faithful leadership, your uh, Bible verses that you give to me every day and the and roommates. That means a lot to me, and I want to thank you uh, for mentoring me uh, these past couple of years. I couldn't have had a better member. Uh, mentor and um, uh, Congressman Shimkus, um, you are a leader that we all looked up to. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead, Kevin. Good job, Pete. Thank you, Mr. Stauber. I'd like to now recognize another member of the Energy and Commerce Committee, uh, my good friend, our good friend, Kathy McMorse Rogers. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for bringing us all together to honor and celebrate. Uh, a senior member of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, my friend and colleague who has led in so many different ways. I'm privileged to have had the, the opportunity to serve with the, the congressman from Illinois now for 10 years. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, on the House Energy and Commerce Committee. And when I think about John, I think about someone who is a true legislator. He's the one that digs in and does the tough job of legislating, knowing the issues and being prepared and figuring out how to actually solve big problems. So you think about the fact he led in modernizing the Toxic Substance Control Act. He's led on lowering fuel for fuel costs for hardworking families all across this country. It was John Shimkus who led in bringing the 911 emergency system into the 21st century. Time and time again, it's been Congressman John Shimkus that is leading to get big things done in order to improve people's lives and secure our future as Americans. So I want to say more than anything, we're going to miss you. We're going to miss your leadership. We're going to miss your example as a true legislator. For the people of Illinois, for my colleagues on the House Energy and Commerce Committee, and for the people's house, know that you have made a difference. So I wanna say thanks for your leadership. I wanna wish you all the best. And I just wanna say, th say thanks to everyone for pulling us together tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ms. McMorris Rogers. Uh, I'd now like to recognize the gentleman from California, Mr. LaMalfa. Uh, thank you, Mr. Davis. I, I just, you know, I, Mr. Shimkus is always one of the guys I enjoyed the most around here. And uh, we didn't get to hang out a lot or share any of the same committees, but he's always a upbeat and uh, friendly fellow to get along with around here. So I, I didn't want tonight to go by without at least saying something to you about how I appreciate you and enjoy you. And uh, you take on really difficult issues and the education you've helped provide me and other members on uh, the situation down at Yucca Mountain has appreciated the battle on that because that's extremely important to get a handle on how we deal with that issue around the country, which hasn't been handled very well. So you're a true leader on that, and I thank you for that. And uh, many, many blessings in you in your next endeavors as, as a friend. I'm glad to be here tonight to, with you. So thank you. I yield back. Thank you, Mr. LaMalfa. Look, I, I can't tell you how privileged I am to be here tonight to be able to stand at this podium and recognize my fellow colleagues on both sides of the aisle, to recognize somebody that I worked for for 16 years. You know, 
I was talking to my wife, Shannon, about what I wanted to say about John tonight because I really, you know, couldn't think of anything really nice to say after 16 years. But she reminded me that I wouldn't be here without his mentorship. I wouldn't be able to have this privilege to serve in this institution with you, Madam Speaker, and with everybody who, who crowded the floor tonight to honor our friend, Mr. Shimkus. You know, she reminded me, you probably, his wife, Karen, who I'm not supposed to recognize in the gallery, so I'm not. I don't want to be chastised later. But his wife, Karen, probably doesn't know this, but I'm probably their fourth son. This is somebody who taught me to be a good worker, taught me that being on time matters, taught me that helping others is a privilege. And I can't say thank you enough to this man because I would not be serving in this great institution without you and your mentorship, your friendship, and your leadership. It wasn't without some hiccups, let me tell you. I'm sure he wanted to fire me a few times. And I think he told me that a few times. But I prevailed, you know why? Because we had a great team. And a great team is built with the leadership of somebody who gives people opportunities to not just survive in a workplace, but to excel. And I can remember that I hadn't thought about running for Congress in a very long time when I got a call in 2012 one day when there was an opportunity to put my name into the mix to run for this office. And in typical John Shimka's fashion, and his wife Karen could probably attest to this, John called me and said, hey, have you ever thought about running for Congress? I said, well, I, I guess maybe because I, I really enjoy watching you. He said, well, if there's ever a time to think about it, now's the time. Okay. In typical John Shimkus fashion, he's like, all right, I got to go. Call Craig. Craig Roberts, his chief of staff, the godfather of my three kids. What a team. What a team. The entire Shimkus team, including my chief of staff since I got here, who worked with me on the Shimkus campaign in the Shimkus office, and is now my staff director on the committee that I'm blessed to run, House Administration Committee. What a legacy this guy leaves for this institution. People will not understand the importance of John Shimkus serving as a member of the House of Representatives until they look back in history and realize some of the things that our colleagues actually talked about tonight. If you were in an emergency anywhere in this great nation, and you have a cell phone that is a lot more ubiquitous today than it ever was when this guy came to Congress in the dark ages of 1996. You can dial 911 and know that it's going to get routed to your local emergency services center. But before John Shipkus got to Congress, that didn't happen. The things that we take for granted today were started by people who served in this institution years before us. And if we don't understand their legacy and we don't understand the history that they brought to all of us and to our nation and to make sure that lives are saved, we will never know their true impact. I personally know John Shimkus' true impact because he impacted my life greatly. He's known me since before I became a parent of now a 23-year-old and two 20-year-olds. These children look to him as somebody who mentored their dad. John Shimkus, I know I don't have a lot of time left tonight. And I got probably a couple months left to harass you a little bit in other speeches. But my friend, coming here to the U.S. House of Representatives and being able to get to know your roommates and your friends and dropping pens. And now our colleagues, it would not have happened without you. You have made me not just a member of this privileged institution. You have made me a better person. You have made me a better dad. You have made me a better husband. 
and you have made this institution in the United States of America a better place for every single citizen in this country. Godspeed to you, Mr. Shimkus, in your retirement. Godspeed to Karen. I love you both, and I yield back no time that I have left. <laughs>